Now I'd like to introduce you all to Matt McConnell of Cool Essence, and as soon as he gets mic'd up here, I will hand the floor over to him. Matt, here's a, uh, a remote control, if you'd prefer to use that. It's uh, forward and back on the okay. slide. You can right. press forward, you have a green laser. Okay, uh, I joked with uh, Matt via email that I wasn't really sure he would want me up here uh, speaking in front of you for this session since uh, Cool Essence is the unluckiest cold fusion company in existence. Um, <laughs> talk about what our initial motivation was for, uh, for founding the company and uh, the original business plan, results we've had so far, um, how much time and money we put into it, and uh, just take a look at kind of where we've ended up so far. Uh, in 2005, we founded the company, and uh, I founded it with Rick Cantwell, who's uh, sitting over there. Um, and it was really an outgrowth of realization that the world needs a new source of energy. Um, we were concerned about peak oil, uh, geopolitical insta instability uh, in oil regions that still had a lot of oil, and global warming. And looking around at the opportunities to invest um, around that theme, Leonard was really unique because, because it had become such a pariah field, um, there was very little investment money going into it, and, and yet the possible impact was huge. Uh, so. My investment motivation, um, I'm the one who's, who's funded the company uh, so far. I haven't brought in any outside money, and I'll get into why uh, in a few minutes, but uh, it's really philanthropic in nature. So I, I think, you know, this would, this source of energy, should it ever be commercialized, would be a fantastic thing for the world. And it will certainly make whoever, whoever finally figures it out and makes it work um, some money, I'm certain. Um, whether they're the ones who get the patent on the airplane or the patent on the flaps, I suspect that they'll do okay. Um, but I really struggle to think that uh, now is the time to be raising venture capital uh, for the field. Uh, obviously, uh, other people have different, uh, different opinions on that. So, our 2005 business plan, replicate published Leonard experiments to find a repeatable experiment. At the time, it seemed trivial. We looked at, at uh, LeonardCanner.org. Yeah. There were, at that point, I don't know, maybe not 2,000 papers, but maybe 1,000 papers, and many of them with positive results. So thinking it would be, it would make no sense to uh, start out with something so obvious as electrolytic cells, where so many people had put so much work into it, we decided to start with low discharge. Um, and we were then going to take this repeatable experiment, understand the science, uh, use that understanding to see whether it was possible to bring a product to market. And as, as some of you probably know, that involves a whole lot of things, safety concerns and regulatory concerns, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then if you have a marketable product, raise money and go out and sell it. That's probably a, a relatively standard um, venture model, I would say. So where are we in 2013? <laughs> yes, still trying to get past step A. After eight years, we have yet to find an experiment with a repeatable positive result. In some cases, we have replicated results that other folks have, uh, have published, but not their conclusions. Um, additional experiments after the initial success have led to conventional explanations. Um, a la uh, Dr. Kidwell's statements this morning, um, one we have, and, and we joke, you know, once every six months or so for the last eight years, we've had cold fusion. Uh, and then in the next three months after that, we've spent our time trying to poke holes in our cold fusion, and uh, so far we have been successful in poking holes in it every time. So here we are. Four million dollars spent so far. 67% of that on people, that's 23 staff years. 
uh, $480,000 on laboratory equipment, 11 major replications, three to 18 months each. Uh, we've done the original glow discharge, which uh, uh, was based on uh, Professor Karabit's work. Gone on to gas loading. We've done a number of different gas loading uh, experiments. And lo and behold, now, after eight years, we have finally broken down and are doing electrolytic work um, without any positive results so far. But it's early. It's probably only been six or nine months. So uh, We've collaborated with institutions. We've collaborated with individuals. Um, we are always interested in talking to people that uh, where it looks like there's a good experimental technique behind what they're doing and uh, you know have a chance to, to come back in and try and replicate the results and corroborate them and, and be happy to um, you know spread that news to the world believe me um, so the takeaway we still think the work is very important our motivation from 2005 remains uh, we still think linear research is basic science. It's not ready for commercialization. At least anything we've seen, we don't, we don't believe it's there yet. And I guess, you know, when you can brew a cup of tea, uh, that's about the time I, I think you're ready to really go and, and raise venture money and, and uh, you know, take it to market. Uh, until then, I think we need better scientific understanding. Uh, and the way to get that is largely through efforts like Skinner, where you've got, um, you know, a, essentially philanthropic uh, motivation to fund the work. Um, that's the same thing that's going on at Coolescence at this point, uh, or government funding. But I, you know, I've raised in my career as an entrepreneur somewhere around $20 million of venture capital, and I. Uh, I, I just wouldn't go to one of the VCs that funded me in the past with anything that I've seen today. I mean, I just don't think it's ready for VC money yet. So that's uh, that's my little um, you know cloud of rain on the. <laughs> on the streets. Terrific, man. Thanks very much.